So, uh, good evening to you all, and I promise I won't uh, be holding you uh, for much longer uh, before we go over to the uh, important stuff that is waiting outside. Um, I'd just like to, to say thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to, to, uh, to send you greetings from, the, uh, from the, all the Nordic uh, countries, from the Nordic embassies here in, in Tallinn and in, in Helsinki, uh, and also on behalf of thanking uh, on behalf of all, all of all of us, thanking also, of course, the uh, the Nordic uh, Council of of Ministers for for organizing this this event. Um, so here I am. My name is Michael, and I'm born in the 1960s. <laughs> so so I guess that disqualifies disqualifies me from from standing here on this stage. Um, and even more so, since my last name is Ericsson, which is not gender neutral at all. <laughs> Ericsson means the son of Eric. Um, but I, I guess if there is some reason for me being here, it's, well, the first reason is, of course, that Sweden happens to hold the rotating presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers. So that's why I, I'm, I'm here uh, speaking, uh, hopefully, uh, on behalf of all the Nordic uh, countries. Uh, but also maybe because I'm, I'm the proud representative of a feminist government, a government that is, has officially pr proclaimed itself as being feminist, pursuing feminist uh, policies both nationally and internationally, globally. As, as a diplomat, I should probably be a little bit careful because we are in the middle of a government-forming process, and we don't know yet who will be the next prime minister or foreign minister, but I think it's fair to say that even though rhetoric might change a little bit, we don't know that yet, but I think that the general consensus in Sweden concerning the role of, of, of gender uh, equality and gender policies uh, in, in public life is, is, is a shared concern throughout the, uh, the political uh, spectrum. Um, I think uh, that it's, it's, it's fair to say here that even though we have the national, the national arena where we do things like parental leave, um, by the way, here I think uh, we, there is still some way to go. I don't think still that there is uh, six months for men and six months for women. I think uh, men tend to take less uh, uh, than, than, than women do. But I, I agree with you, Kristen, when you say that it's also a matter of organizational culture. And my own organization, which is the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, I can say with certainty that it's not a disadvantage, career-wise, to have uh, been off on parental leave for, for, ma for male uh, workers. So I think uh, culture is, is changing. But what is perhaps more uh, specific and has been in the, in the media lately is the global uh, the feminist foreign policy of, of this government. Uh, it's a priority in our security policy, and it's also a priority in, in our uh, development assistance cooperation. We have quite a substantial uh, program. It's about 4 billion, 4 billion euros per year. So that's a vast amount of money that we uh, spend, and, uh, and gender uh, equality is one of our main priorities. So you can see that there is also a resource aspect to to this. Um, however, I think it's also, it's also important to be a little bit self-critical. Uh, this is one year after Me Too. That was in, in, in November 2017. Uh, Sweden is ranked as one of the most equal countries in the world, but still there is much to do, uh, I think, uh, in industry, but also in, 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 in liberal, li the liberal, liberal arts. Uh, uh, market, um, and maybe even more so there, I would say, and this is my personal reflection, but I think that if companies realize that there is a red line which is profit, and that gender equality is good for profits, then maybe that's a good reason for, for not uh, uh, discriminating against women after all. In some of the other sectors, liberal arts, science, you don't have that red line to the same extent. And I think, personally, that what you've seen in Sweden over the past year is very much focus being put on those sectors where we have some, some distance to go still. 
But in, in, in industry and business, uh, I, I believe there are still sectors where, where action is, is very much needed. I think uh, reference was already made to the fact that sectors such as venture capital, investment, uh, banking, you have a virtual lack of, of women also within Swedish business and industry. So that is to say that we have a long way to go also in Sweden. Um, just one more thing, uh, because I'd like to finish by uh, quoting uh, the, the, the Swedish champion of, of a feminist foreign policy, which is our foreign minister, um, who was recently in, in New York to participate in the United Nations Security Council meeting, where Sweden is a non-permanent member. We have been for almost two years now, and we're looking forward to seeing Estonia as as hopefully a new member for the 2020-2021 period. But she was in, in, in the Security Council uh, discussing precisely what we've been discussing today, women's participation. And one of the things she said I found very uh, nicely put, she said, um, no woman needs to be given a voice. They actually have a voice of their own. What is needed is more listening. And I think that's a good, good uh, way of, of ending uh, our uh, membership of the uh, Security Council in the United Nations. Now, with that, I won't keep you any longer, so I would just like to, on behalf of the, of the Nordic embassies in Tallinn and Helsinki, um, invite you all to uh, some refreshments outside. Uh, if someone cares to go with me to listen to uh, another speech about Ingmar Bergman, you're welcome to do so, but I have to, lean, to leave in a few moments because we have another event going on in another part of, of Tallinn. So, please enjoy and thank you, all to, thank you to all the organizers for a very good uh, day today. Thank you. Thank you.